If you are anything like me, you found yourself stuck at home this year, spending way more hours on a computer than you probably would have liked. At the end of it, you're just like, what did I even do today? I'm Annabelle Trades, I'm a farmer and a teacher, and six years ago, I left corporate America so I didn't have to sit in front of a computer all day long. Discovering farming and woodworking, I realized that there's something so special about having a tangible reward for my labor, or having physical evidence for how I spent my time. But we found ourselves in the middle of a pandemic. All the classes that I was set to teach around the country were canceled, all of our in-person meetings moved to Zoom, and my email box started piling higher than the Eiffel Tower. I struggle a lot with anxiety and depression. If I have too many days like that, then my mental health really starts to suffer. And so to fight that, I had to find a way that I could use my hands, something that didn't require a ton of tools or a ton of time or space that would give me a little token, a reminder of something good that I was able to accomplish that day. Spoon carving is a great way to use a small, inexpensive toolkit and free materials to learn a whole lot of really important things about woodworking. This little skill is something we've been able to teach hundreds of other people this year as well, and today I'd like to share it with you too. Even if your ultimate goal is building larger pieces of furniture, from learning basic body mechanics to grain direction and structural integrity to three-dimensional design, if you start with spoon carving, you might actually gain the skills to build your own custom furniture. There is a lot of romance and nostalgia even to be found in wooden spoons themselves. I think everyone remembers their grandmother's wooden cooking spoon with all of its battle scars and burn marks and heavy use. I have somewhat less nostalgic memories of wooden spoons because I was a pretty mischievous kid and my backside was very familiar with the work of a wooden spoon. In fact, it wasn't until I started woodworking that I realized it wasn't my buns of steel that had broken a drawer full of factory-made spoons in my parents' house. It was the lack of consideration for grain runout that had been made in their design. When I learned the hard way what grain runout was by snapping the head off of a spoon that I had carved, my furniture suddenly got a whole lot sturdier as well. When my husband Adam and I moved here to Tennessee, my friend Josh Nava and I started working together. We were dreaming about building a school that would support the preservation of disappearing life skills. Skills like building traditional furniture, farm to table cooking, gardening, blacksmithing, the same skills that Josh and I had both learned in an effort to overcome the learning disabilities that we'd both struggled with our entire lives. Josh and I had originally connected seven years ago on Instagram over a shared love for spoon carving. This year, the pandemic being what it was, we realized that we had a little skill that we could share with people who were stuck at home and working at their computer and banging their head against a wall, having no outlet for their creative energy. As Josh and I looked into teaching classes online during the pandemic, we realized the two biggest things missing from a lot of online resources were feedback and accountability. We cared a whole lot more about people actually learning the skills that we were trying to teach them and experiencing the transformation in their lives that making things by hand can offer. So though it meant a much bigger time investment on our part, we decided to offer live classes as opposed to recorded classes so that we could teach these skills, so we could offer live feedback and provide the accountability our students needed to actually finish their carving project and then practice on their own after class. When Skillshare approached me about the opportunity for them to come to the farm to film a Skillshare Originals class, I knew that Josh and I were ready to make the best course available on spoon carving. 
the things that we had learned through teaching so many online spoon crabbing classes, the way that we had learned to constantly refine and clarify the things that we were saying, having fleshed out all the physical analogies we'd need to explain a physical skill in an online format, were honed and ready to record for this course. We even snuck in a whole section on how to learn anything you want, online or in books, the same way that Josh and I had learned woodworking, and we disguised it as a spoon carving lesson. In our Skillshare course, you'll learn how to pick wood for a spoon, how to create three-dimensional designs, and how to design beautiful functional items in your home. Josh and I are really proud of the Skillshare course that we created together, and I hope that you will click the link below to get a free trial to Skillshare so that you can go through our course and get access to Skillshare's entire education library, which is massive. So make sure that you don't miss out on this awesome offer. Before this year, I can't think of very many things that I've even done a few dozen times, much less a few hundred. I carved every single day, but it was that making something over and over and over that I actually learned more than I ever even thought was possible about spoon carving. During the pandemic, Josh and I taught over 500 people how to carve spoons over Zoom. Josh and I recorded all of our live classes so that students could go back and watch the material after they'd had some practice and had more context and actually could learn and review the material. And then we asked them to show us their finished spoons. I'm pretty sure that I actually learned more than any of our students did because Josh is a much better carver than I am. While prior to the pandemic, I had carved between 100 and 200 spoons over the period of the last eight years, Josh had carved thousands. He had also written a book on spoon carving. All of a sudden, a whole lot of things that I'd read about and experimented with in the past, but I'd never practiced enough on my own, became crystal clear. But for me, the real value was never in the spoons that we carved or the knowledge that I gained. It was being able to work alongside one of my best friends. This is my friend Josh, and I am good night! <laughs> <laughs> Having a built-in excuse to hang out with his wife Deb and their precious sons on a regular basis was incredible. And with them in our quarantine pod, that time together is not something that I have taken for granted. A fun side effect of making things yourself is that you've made something that is worth something. You've done something with your time that is valuable. What you've made is better quality and has more meaning than if you've bought something from a store no matter how much you paid for it. And it's not even just that you made it, that you get to have it, but it's something that was made specifically for you. If you click the link below and take our Skillshare class, you can feel the same way that I'm feeling right now using this spoon that is specially designed to fit my great grandmother's cast iron pan. And unless I drop it in the fire, this thing will outlive me and my grandkids can use it too.